So I'm just going to run through real quick. Um, InDesign is a is a page layout program, and we're gonna we're gonna get deeper into InDesign eventually. But I want to give you a quick run through um, um, of what this template is gonna um, what you're, we're gonna do with our shoe photos within the template. So has anyone? There are some people that have worked in InDesign here, correct? Okay. Okay. Well, more than it. that's pretty good. Um, so essentially, in, uh, InDesign takes files from Photoshop, Illustrator. Um, it uses PSD files, uh, JPEG files, um, uh, Illustrator files, EPS file. Basically, any any design file you're going to really want, a graphics file, and it, it's kind of a repository for all of that um, stuff. So uh, that's why it's really a page layout program where people, you know, use it to um, uh, primarily um, uh, change uh, large amounts of text, uh, uh, manage uh, text uh, styles, um, and here they're calling them paragraph and character styles. Um, so I'll go through the differences of that, um, but what I really want to do is just um, uh, place a shoe file in here uh, for you um, and show you kind of what's going to happen after we, in, in several weeks, uh, finish our uh, uh, shoe photo editing um, uh, project. Um, so essentially here, the template's going to look a lot like this. I'm going to have shoes placed, so all you're really going to have to do is click on a shoe and then click on this little link uh, icon. The link icon is um, a, a dialog box that houses all of the links that are placed into your InDesign file. And as you can see, there's a, just a bunch of repeats of this Nike shoe.psd file nike demo underscore small psd file and you can see in the layout obviously every instance i have outlined here um, up in my menu it's telling me i have 146 instances of this image some are small some are large um, etc but that's essentially what this links panel is is telling me right now and there's some instances um, it's going to have this little question mark icon here this means that InDesign cannot find the native source file that's placed in the file. Here's the page that it's on, page 8. So I can click on it and navigate right to that image that's missing according to my palette. I can still see it on my screen. And it's very pixelated. Um, InDesign remembers kind of essentially what it looked like generally. So it's kind of giving you a preview, but it's not going to be sharp and print ready. Um, at this point. So just to keep in the back of your minds that that's, that's what we're looking at there. So I'm going to go back to the shoe image and in my links panel after I click on my shoe um, I'm clicking on it with this direct selection tool uh, I'm sorry this selection tool um, which is different from the direct selection tool. These two tools are featured in Adobe Illustrator when we went over last week, but they do slightly different things. Um, well, they do the same things, but then they do a little bit more. Um, in this instance, with the photography, um, the selection tool can select an entire um, image um, box. Um, I can actually resize this box around this image um, and so on and so forth. I can add stroke to it, etc. Um, this direct selection tool uh, will enable me to grab a corner of this kind of invisible box and I can kind of crop the photo in, in any kind of which way um, I want depending on the shape of the box. If you imagine this box um, being like um, a shape in Adobe Illustrator, it's, it's exactly that really. Um, uh, I can add points to this box and you know, kind of cut into the image behind it, if you will, um, and so on and so forth within InDesign here. Um, I'm not going to do that, um, but what I am going to do is hit my direct selection tool again and show you that when you hover over uh, the image, as opposed to the corner of the box, see, um, I can select that corner, but if I hover over the image itself, I can actually move the image within the box. 
um, or the frame that it's housed in. So just to make it more obvious here, I'll add a frame to this photo box and show you that, in fact, with my direct selection tool, I can move this image around within the box and cropping it each and every way like that. So that's the difference between these two tools within InDesign. Um, again, like I mentioned before, um, I'm just undoing it a bunch of times. Like I mentioned before, it acts like Illustrator 2. So I have this, um, these kind of just repetitive lines here. And these are just, you know, vector lines, you know, and I can use my direct selection tool to select a line, move it around, um, very much like Illustrator as well. Um, so you can draw within InDesign, um, just like you can in Illustrator, uh, but primarily it's all about uh, working with typography and then images, placing images, and just bringing everything together, uh, being uh, a medium for that. But once you're done with your shoes, eventually what we're going to do is just click on the uh, template image that's built for you, hit this links icon and uh, to open your links dialog box and hit this um, little chain link icon here. And then that's going to ask you, okay, what do you want to relink into this box? Um, uh, so I already have a link placed. Well, now I'm relinking it. Um, I'm going to hit my uh, solo bear shoe and I'm just going to place that, hit OK. Um, it's going to give me a warning that there's different layers um, in this shoe image than there was in this shoe image, in my original, which I'll explain um, as we get further along. So you can see that uh, InDesign is going to place the shoe into the box at, um, this is pretty much a little over 100% of the size. Um, the way I'm telling that is, or seeing that is I'm, uh, using my direct selection tool and clicking on the image within the image box, the shoe image, um, and then looking up here and seeing that my width um, is 138 point many decimal points percent and approximately 139 percent in the height. So if I command option shift E, which is a which is a great keyboard shortcut and I always use it. Uh, Command Shift Option E will take an image that's in an image box and automatically fit it uh -huh, um, into the size of the box. So that's exactly what I did there. I can resize this box to make it nice and small. Command Shift Option E will make it fit into the box perfectly. So eventually your shoes are going to look like like this spread here. I just kind of built this out. E. Uh, yeah, so it's Command Shift Option E. Mm -hmm. um, were you here when I mentioned the shortcut PDF files earlier? Yeah, they're on the Moodle. Check that out. That's going to. Um, I was looking around and there were a lot of really terrible shortcut cheat sheets out there, uh, but the, this, um, uh, this site I found really had some good ones. Uh, and I, so, so I saved them all um, up on our Moodle so we can use them. Uh, um, so I have my shoe kind of placed here, right? I, I went through and did all that. Um, how do I show the variations of the shoe, you know, without having to go back and forth, copy and paste many times um, within this InDesign file? So I have one shoe here. This is solovershoe.psd. I have the same exact file here, solovershoe.psd, and then so on and so forth. All of these shoes are essentially the same Photoshop file, right? So how do I, what's an easy way to show the different versions of it is what I can do is I can click on this shoe and then I can go within InDesign um, uh, up to, let's see, where is it? Object and then object layer options. 
So you click on the image, go to Object and Object Layer Options, and here InDesign is kind of reading the layers uh, within my Photoshop file. So it has Shoe Layer 3, it has Shoe Layer 2 and Shoe Layer 1, um, and it's telling me all this, right? So what I can do is then I can turn off Shoe Layer 3, and here's a preview box that I always will click on, right? So shoe layer three is obviously the purple shoe. That's at the top of the Photoshop file. So I turn that off within InDesign, and then I can just hit OK, and then now I have my shoe layer two uh, showing in the layout. And again, I can go to my third uh, shoe here, and then I'll just go to, uh, sorry, it's object, object layer options, and then I'll turn shoe layer three and then shoe layer two off, and then I'll have shoe one showing. Okay. So I can hit OK. So then that, that group is done. So I don't really have to like go and copy and paste or, you know, copy and, or place each. Uh, I don't have to even save three different Photoshop files um, uh, for the three different shoes. I can just have my three different Photoshop layers in, in InDesign, I can turn them on and off depending on which colors I want to use. For the shadow piece, right, so I have this big shoe here, and it's got this shadow. What I did was I put, like, this light pink background, so you can kind of see that um, that this shadow is it's not as realistic. Um, so what you can do with the object uh, layering options in this instance is, is um, adjust the opacity or the layering uh, effect in InDesign. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually control click this and make my display performance a high quality um, here. Um, uh, InDesign is going to default all of the images to make it like this low quality so you can see it's kind of like jagged looking here. It defaults images in low quality because it actually houses a lot of images onto the file itself so it keeps it moving faster instead of lagging and trying to update the graphics um, as you're working on it. But sometimes I'll, you know, give that high quality display just to make sure that that the image is looking crisp on screen too. Anyways, um, when you see that, then you'll know. So what I'm going to do with this shoe layer is I'm going to um, go up to object and object layer options. And I'm going to turn off all of the layers. That's shoe layer two that I have showing. I'm going to turn off shoe layer two and shoe layer one and I'm just going to have the shadow showing, and I'm going to hit OK. So for my shadow layer, I'm going to go up to my effects panel, which is here. I'm going to click on this drop down underneath the effects panel, and I'm going to hit multiply. And so again, multiply is just going to take the dark shadow and it's just going to overlay it over the background and cut out all of the white pixels that are kind of going to just disappear on the white on the on the background. So you can have like a wood grain background or whatever. You can have a, a if you have like lines coming through the background or something like that, any kind of texture, um, it'll look very natural on this on this shadow when you apply the multiply um, effect. So that's my shadow, right? It's just a shadow, there's no shoe. But what I'm going to do is select the image. I'm going to press copy a few times. And then I'm going to press um, uh, Command Shift Option V. Command Shift Option V will then paste. It's duplicating now. It duplicated my shadow layer and paste it. Well, it didn't duplicate it. What I did was copied it first, and then I did a Command Shift Option V, which is paste in place. You can even find it in the menu here too. It's paste in place, right? So that's what I did to this shadow layer. I put it, pasted it right on top of the, um, its original layer. 
Now I'm going to change the effect uh, from multiply to normal, going back to this white border around this shadow. And then I'm again going to go to my object and object layer options. And I'm going to turn on shoe layer one. And I'm going to turn off the shadow on this top copy of the shoe layer. Or the shoe image, I'm sorry, this, this PSD file here, solovershoe.psd. And then, and then essentially what this is, is two images layered exactly on top of each other with one layer turned off on the bottom image um, and then one layer turned on on the other image while the other layer is off. So I'm just swapping the two layers um, in InDesign and what I can do then is, um, is just kind of select both of these do a command G, group them just like you would an illustrator, and then I have this shoe that I can freely kind of move around um, and my shadow looks good and all that. So that's, that's, that's kind of eventually, right? Um, so same thing for this shoe, right? Let me just... Uh, let me move this out of the, actually, I'll move this to the back. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, sa same kind of thing. I'm going to take this shoe, I'm going to go to effects, I'm going to go to multiply. I have this whole entire shoe multiplying right now. So now I can see, yep, my shadow on the background is good. I'll just do that multiply effect on this shoe too. <clears throat> Then I'm going to go to object again, object layer options, turn off all the layers except for the shadow, hit OK. Again, command copy, command uh, alt shift V, paste in place. Turn off that layering option or that uh, layer blending mode here in the effects. Then go to uh, object layer options then I'll turn on my other shoe layer, turn the shadow off for that top piece. And then that one's good to go. And then same thing, copy, command shift, paste in place. Actually, no, delete, I gotta, actually I'm gonna go here on this, um, uh, this layer, I need to turn off the shoe, copy, command option, Shift V to paste in place. It's there in the same exact position. Object layer options, turn shadow off, turn shoe on, my preview's on so I can see what color shoe I'm working with now. Okay, that's the different color that I have. And then turn the layering effect to uh, normal instead of multiply. And then there's that, that group of shoes. So again, it, um, so as you're building your stuff, if you um, if you group your shoes together in, in folders, uh, folder groups, uh, that'll work too. That's what I uh, under this object layer options menu. So like for instance, this shoe, I'm going to go to object object layer options again. <clears throat> now you can see for this one, I had created uh, folders um, within this Photoshop file. And within the folder, I have um, a shoe layer and a shadow layer, so I can turn that on for that shoe. I can turn the shadow off. Uh, well, there's a shadow. I can turn the shoe off individually and turn it back on. Um, so however you layer your artwork and organize it in Photoshop, it's going to maintain, uh, InDesign is going to read that file and actually maintain those layer properties within it too. So it's going to make it a lot easier to work with. Uh, finally, within um, uh, this template that you're going to get, um, you're going to have um, one of the requirements eventually uh, towards the end of the project is going to be um, to actually edit this type uh, to come up with like um, uh, a typographic um, uh, 
look and feel for your brand's catalog. Um, so one of the um, huge, huge tools in InDesign are these paragraph and character styles. So you can get to them from that uh, menu on the side here. It's, it's very iconic. So you know you have your paragraph symbol and then you have your little A symbol. So this is character and paragraph styles. I have uh, defined um, character and paragraph styles uh, for you within InDesign. Has anyone not worked with uh, character and paragraph styles in InDesign before? Okay. Um, so what you can do with these two um, uh, these two tools is really define uh, a style. So right now you can see what pieces of type have a style defined to them by double uh, double clicking on them. So I'm double clicking this paragraph copy here and I'm double clicking you know this color copy here and I'm seeing what styles I have applied in my paragraph styles palette here. So color options is is this type here um, and this is just color 00122 that's like a code for a color in a shoe catalog, you know, for instance. Or I'm double clicking this body copy here and this is my body copy paragraph style and header paragraph style and so on. Header paragraph style looks like it has actually two styles but what it actually has is a header paragraph style being this all cap Helvetica new condensed bold font and a character style um, which is actually zeros in on a, an individual character within a paragraph. So you can apply a style to a word or whatever within a paragraph. So why would you want to do that? Well, you'd want to do that to create contrast within your paragraph uh, styles. So let's just go ahead and edit this and I'll show you what um, what's kind of happening. So in my header style, I'm going to double click that in my paragraph styles palette. And what's coming up here is this huge, I mean ginormous, uh, like menu of options. And these are, this goes, this pretty much goes almost as far, uh, this goes into such a granular level that, um, that you almost don't even need to, it just almost doesn't even make sense to even edit the type um, directly. So what you can do then is um, go into all these options. Uh, general is just going to show you what your style is based off of. It's not really based on any paragraph style, meaning it is its own standalone style. I can say, well, I want it to be based off of you know, another different style that has different uh, properties, but I'm not going to go do that. Under here, under style settings, it's going to say, um, it's going to basically outline what it, the style is defined by. So the style is Helvetica New, Condensed Bold, it's a size 22 font, letting is 18 points, um, uh, so on and so forth, it's all caps. Um, I'm sorry, or, hearing things, um, etc. You can go to basic character formats here. And so for your catalogs, you know, Helvetica might not work for your brand, right? So you'll maybe want to go somewhere else like Avenir. So now you, so I'll just hit OK. Well, I'll turn, you can preview these things, which is great. Um, I'm just going to hit OK and show you that actually that one change affected all of the headers within the entire, you know, magazine. So um, that's a, a, a huge time saver in the design process because when you're working on a catalog, right, with a client, you don't want to, you don't want to get into the mess where you're changing styles in an entire magazine by selecting individual fonts and they're changing their mind as you go along and you're in revision like 20. What you do is you say, okay, customer, here's a spread of the inside of the magazine with all of the styles, approve that, and then we're going to build the rest of the magazine based on what you approved. So then you kind of cover yourself 
in the future. Nevertheless, you know, that's, uh, that's essentially what I'm looking to have you do. Um, I'm also looking to see if, you know, you wanted to change the size of this font. You know, you certainly can do that. And again, it's going to apply to the entire magazine. Um, you can adjust the letting. Um, it doesn't have two lines of copy there, so that's fine. You can change the casing from all caps to normal, um, small caps, and it's just going to do this across the board. Um, let's see, strike, underlying, all this stuff. And you can see, like, when I underline, it's applying the underline to this little bit here, but when uh, this one, two, three, four, five, um, that's got the shoe number character style applied to it, meaning that I can't change that character style. I can only, ch uh, because I have a style applied to it already. So paragraph style is high level, character style is a, is a little more specific uh, for a change in text. Does everyone kind of get that or to, do I need to kind of, should I go into it a little more? Is it pretty straightforward? Um, you can even, you know, uh, I don't know, change the alignments, center, right, left justify, whatnot. Again, it's going across the board. Um, going into character color here, you can do the, um, you can do different things. Um, I can click this, I can double click this uh, little swatch box here um, that we're all familiar with. Um, I can kind of use my sliders to uh, define, redefine a new color, hit OK, and then I can kind of just, oh, that didn't really, oh, I have to add it, so, um, so here I just redefine, like, not a pink color, here, so I'll um, redefine that color, and I'll hit Add, and then Done, um, Oh, I think that should have added it to my swatches. But you can change colors here. I think you can. That's pretty much. The one thing you can't do in this menu is you cannot um, apply effects. So I can't, like, say this I want to be lighter or, I mean, like, transparent and so on and so forth. That's all something that would have to be done um, uh, on a really granular, like directly on the font itself. Uh, so we'll go back here. And then so for the color, you know, again, like this all works. It's just now I'm targeting a different piece of text here. Um, uh, let me just you know, change this font to like thin or something. And that's going across the board. And I can make it bigger. Uh, whatever works, whatever works kind of for your brand. And then the same thing for this uh, body copy here. Um, you know, just kind of find something that, and this is, you know, just really just wanted to show you how that works. Um, so, um, and then if you wanted to get down to the, um, the character style here, you could just use this character style palette. And this is called, this uh, style is called shoe number. Uh, the character styles don't give you as many options because, you know, you're not really adjusting the letting or anything like that. You're just kind of uh, adjusting, like, the size and the basic. Um, because, like, all of the the spacing and so on and so forth is being adopted from the paragraph style. Um, so this is just a really granular character style. So if I wanted it like, oh, here's my preview box. There we go. So you'll have a, you'll have a chance to um, initially design a spread. Uh, once you get all of your shoes built out, then we're going to do a spread. And then once you establish the spread, then you can just apply the rest uh, of the pages with the same kind of style.
Does that kind of does the text piece of this make sense? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it's just going to apply it. So instead of me, you know, having to go like this and being like, uh, Gotham, you know, or whatever, you know, um, there's another tool, right, in InDesign where you can just kind of, I can kind of double click this and then get my eyedropper tool, which is right here. So I'll do that again. I'll double click this, right, and then I'll, sometimes I'll hit my eyedropper tool and just say, okay, adopt this style from that and apply it to what I have selected. You know, it character and paragraph styles is even faster than me doing this. You know, just clicking and dragging and clicking and dragging, like that it even changes it much faster. So um, uh, those are those are huge to have. The, the only thing is is that you have to define them. That has to be like one of the first things that you define in the text is like that style. Uh, so even if it's a style you don't want, yeah, right, yeah, that's an awesome way of of explaining it. It's like a master page for text. So like, um, you know, I'll click this text and I'll copy and paste it. You know that that those styles are still the same. Um, there's already defined here and even when I change my header oh, even if I let me deselect it when I'll change my header and I just copied and pasted that in um, you know and I make a change to the master style um, uh, it'll it'll apply to that layer even if it was just copied uh, so yeah you're absolutely right it's like a master page uh, that's a great way of explaining it for sure. So yeah, eventually that's where we're going. We're not getting there now. We just need to get uh, the shoes collected together. So um, that's where I'm going to leave it at. I think uh, 